The US remains one of the top tourist destinations, with something new being discovered each day. If you've already been there, then it's worth going back to check out all the exciting things that have been added. There is no shortage of memorable experiences awaiting visitors. The shoe tree, now, this is truly the middle of nowhere we're out here. It's desolate. Nature has plenty of surprises in store for us, such as a forest that resembles a smiley face and a cemetery dedicated to ice cream. It's amazing what one can find when looking close enough. Recent findings in the United States have been quite shocking, with some information being completely unexpected. Warm invasion. One factor about the US that's worth keeping in the back of your mind is that there's a lot of biological diversity. What we mean is that you won't find the same species in the same areas. One in particular that's become a recent threat is the invasive Pipalium otherwise known as the hammerhead worm. It's a bit off putting in both shape and color, but you can sort of see where it gets the hammerhead name from. But be warned, this is not a worm to trifle with. A Facebook post went viral not long ago, claiming to be a part of the Texas Invasive Species Institute, in featuring a picture of the disturbing worm. The post put out a warning not to touch the worm, and definitely not to slice it up, because this creature has the unique ability to multiply when chopped into pieces. Say you cut it straight down the middle, you won't be left with a worm split in half, but instead, you'll quickly have two hammerhead flatworms to deal with. Not only that, but they seem to be multiplying even faster in North Texas for some reason. The scariest part might be that it looks just like any other worm you could find in your backyard on a rainy day. But unlike the native earth worms that feed and regurgitate helpful soil for plants, these hammerhead worms will instead eat the useful earthworm. In a way, you can think of them as the harmful weeds plaguing your vegetable garden. After the post made headlines, people throughout Texas started posting about their own worm discoveries. They'd been advised to either spray them with citrus oil and vinegar, or to freeze them in a tightly sealed bag. Lost Sphinx in California Other than the ancient pyramids, Egypt is also known for having a colossal Sphinx statue hiding away in their harsh deserts. But did you know that there's another desert that's been hiding a Sphinx all this time? Or at least its head? In California, on the set of Cecil B. DeMille, 1923 Hollywood hit, The Ten Commandments. A 300-pound Sphinx head was discovered in the dunes of Santa Barbara County. The film was intended to be an epic retelling of the story of Moses from the Bible. It was a silent, black and white era film that was shot in the Guadalupe Nap Pomo dunes. Hoping to mimic the landscape of Egypt, to make it just right, Demilly led an excavation that stretched 12 stories high and 800 feet wide. At the time, it was by far the largest film set ever to be made, and it featured a colossal gate some fake statues of pharaohs and notably 21 sphinx made out of plaster and shipped from Paris. It took over 1300 craftsmen to put it all together, but once the film was finished, de Villy asked for everyone to bury their set into the dunes. No reason was asked why, and de Milly never brought it up again to explain himself. One theory was that their budget had run out and they didn't have enough time or money to dismantle the whole project. Another reason could have been that DeMille didn't want anyone else to use his custom pieces for one of their own projects. He really wanted to keep his film unique. But regardless of the reason, the set did turn up again, and Hollywood relics were found once more. Unfortunately though, they crumbled in an attempt to free them from the sand. The Casa Grande ruins. The Hovacom was a culture of people that flourished in a south-central region of modern-day Arizona. They centred most of their community around some impressively large adobe structures, but without any traces or hints at an explanation. 
They all seemingly abandoned their region in 1450 CE. Today, the Casa Grande Ruins National Monument is held up to preserve the ancient farming community of the former Hohakam people. The ruins that were left behind make up multiple structures all around by a sturdy wall meant to protect the local people from invasions and secure their crops. The original records of Casa Grande were left behind in 1694. People didn't really begin to travel to the abandoned fields until train travel was more common though. Around the 1860s to the 1880s, but instead of embracing the lost heritage, what happens to most abandoned American towns also occurred here. Graffiti vandalism and all types of souvenir hunting or grave robbing took place. An archaeological reserve was set up to try and protect the small town from further destruction, and in 1892, the Casa Grande ruins were designated as the first archaeological reserve in the US. By 1918, it even became a national monument. That being said, the reserve is more of a protection over a historical site. There isn't a whole lot to do there if you're looking for a day of fun and entertainment, but if learning history is your thing, you probably won't want to miss it. Abandon Oklahoma Town If you're making your way through the United States and you happen to reach Oklahoma's Ottawa County, you might stumble across the most northeastern incorporated city. It sits right at the edge of the city limits, connecting to the Kansas state line, but you'll have to decide if it's worth staying or leaving. Pitcher was once the most productive mining fields in the tri-state lead and zinc district that was comprised of Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri. At one point, it produced over $20 billion worth of war during its run from 1917 to 1947, in fact. Over half the lead and zinc metals used in World War I came directly from the Pitcher field. But with so much mining and so many hazardous materials, it's no wonder that the local people started complaining about health issues. The water that was poured from underground was tainted by all of the lead pumping, and in 1983, the US Environmental Protection Agency had to step in and try and clean up the mess. It wasn't until 2008, and the EPA finally managed to clean up most of the site costing over $160 million in the process. But by the time the town was finally livable again, disaster struck once more, this time in the form of an F4 tornado. Six people didn't survive the natural disaster, and over 150 others were badly injured. In 2009, the town decided to close up for good. Strange souvenir at the airport. Here's a bit of a strange and gruesome tale. Airport security loves to stress that if you see something strange, you should definitely report it. You never know what you might find at a terminal of travelers from anywhere around the world, but this particular package probably isn't what you think it is. At the Detroit Metropolitan Airport in Michigan, US Customs and Border Specialists discovered a young dolphin skull left behind in some unaccompanied luggage. Authorities looked into the situation and said that the bag was separated from its owners during their transit overseas, but it did successfully make its way through a routine screening and x-ray. Also, in case you were wondering, possessing a dolphin skull isn't actually legal in the United States, or at least this one wasn't. There are many wildlife restrictions on imports and exports, specifically targeting birds and marine mammals like the dolphin in question. But another question is, who left behind these animal bones and what are they planning on doing with them? Authorities might have the answers by now, but they're not sharing any confidential information. They turn the dolphin skull over to the US Fish and Wildlife Service for a proper investigation and will wait for their answers first. Leftover Presidents The Presidents of the United States are more than just figureheads to the powerful country. But if you were to travel to Kroger in Virginia, you might actually find some literal presidential figureheads. 
These giant aging busts were sculpted for the Open Air Museum and President's Park from Williamsburg, but things didn't quite work out, and the park closed down permanently just a few years after its grand opening. A man named Howard Hankins didn't want the 43 sculptures to go to waste, and commissioned them to be replaced and moved over to where they sit today. The bus averaged out to be around 20 feet tall and weighed around 20,000 pounds each. What's more, it cost over $50,000 to get them moved, but the cost was a bit steeper than what money could afford as more than a few of them were damaged in the process. You still can visit the statues today and see their crumbling pieces before they all start to fade away from existence. But if things go well and a new presidential park is opened, Hankins plans to move them back for display. There will probably need to be some remodeling and a few other extra costs, not to mention the travel expense of shipping them out again, but hopefully they'll still get the chance to see light again. Bishop's Castle. There aren't a whole lot of castles in the North American region. There are plenty of geographical reasons and even more cultural explanations for why that is. But that isn't to say that there aren't any castles at all. In Colorado, there might just be the most famous of all the American castles, and it was built by Jim Bishop in 1969. Bishop set up shop in the city of Rye with no blueprints or diagrams to follow for instructions. It took about 60 years to complete, but the design is a pure monument to his own imagination and casual approach to construction. He reportedly told one interviewer, I just build, I don't measure. When Bishop started the infamous Bishop Castle, it was originally just a one-room cottage. Now it's a fully structured tower of teetering bridges and stairs, along with plenty of signs asking visitors not to shake or jump, because, well, Bishop didn't believe in building codes or standardized safety measures. Bishop started his climb to castle him when he was just 15. By mowing lawns and delivering news, he raised just enough to buy the piece of land he craved, but his parents had to handle the paperwork because he was too young at the time. He then learned how to build and forage and fix everything that he needed to live on his own, with some help from his dad until the inspiration to build a castle struck him. At that point, his dad decided it was too much work and backed out, but the young bishop wouldn't let his dream die, and evidence of that willpower is still visible today. If you're willing to make the trip, so, if you aren't spooked out by some of these shocking discoveries, would you still want to come and see what else the United States has to offer? There are a lot more mysteries than what we've covered here, but we like to hope that we've given a bit of insight to the unusual and mystifying traits of the massive country. But there's always more to look out for, so we'll keep our eyes and ears open for our next round of topics.